All right, so this is uh, number two of the week. We have to do a review, and the reason we have to do a review is because I fumbled the ball, I fumbled the bag, and did not actually record the sound. It was showing the sound was recorded, but no excuses, play like a champion. I think we just wanted to be in front of you again with Eric's beautiful sigh, take two, as we go into it. So I will go into mine, which was the DOJ has sued in 2020 NAR, which is the new National Association of Realtors. They essentially said that there is a blanket monopoly over commissions. They're using the Sherman Antitrust Act, which I actually found out in middle school was about a train conglomerate. And I think in the late 1800s, they broke it up. Ironically enough, after that, it all became the same under, even though it was different companies. They're using the same thing. NAR just had a big victory, and they said, listen, we don't have a monopoly over commissions, and they expect the DOJ to appeal the decision that there is a monopoly. We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> What are my thoughts? Yes. Uh, my thoughts? Do we have a monopoly over the commissions? Well, we are allowed to set whatever commissions that we want, and that is a free market. And the owner is allowed to accept it or not accept it. That's correct. And they are allowed to list on their own, which yep. they don't have to pay a commission. Zero percent. If you're listing a $150 million property, you're probably not going to pay 6%. Yeah. If you are... Which one is a for sale by owner? If you're listing a uh, $300,000 property, you probably need to do 6% just to break even on all the brokerage expenses and this and that. So yeah. um, eh, I don't know what the deal is with this attack it's, on commissions obviously they want to eliminate them i mean they've been trying for years and years but uh, you know they've talked about it for a while there's always going to be a segment that is selling on their own there's always going to be a segment that is discount brokers and there's always going to be a segment that are traditional five percent six percent that's how it is that's how it's always going to be what the percentages are is probably going to change i just can't see more for sale by owners i just can't see it I, I, it's it's always been pretty even on bad times, good times, even times. The amount of discounts in the suburbs, discount brokerages, I could see rising because maybe they don't, you know, don't want to put any uh, heat on the suburb brokers, but maybe they don't have to go through a co-op board or a condo board or it's a three-month process. And well, it's like interesting that. you say that when you bring up the FISBOs. I mean, in reality, they always pay 3% yeah. or 2.5. They always yeah. pay the buyer's agent. Yeah. So really what they're trying to save on is that extra 2.5% where I think once you've listed on your own, you realize what a pain that is yep. uh, to deal with all the agents, to deal with all the inquiries, to show the apartment, this and that, where all of a sudden you're like, for 2.5%, sure. Yeah. Uh, my article was converting offices into condos in the Financial Times, New York after the pandemic. And this is a hot topic because this is going to be coming up a lot more often uh, now that work, working remotely uh, has taken away some of the commercial offices in Midtown, especially uh, less people wanting to go into the office, less yep. people need to go into the office. And uh, there's a lot of empty buildings. A lot. A lot. And yeah. there are not that many apartments available. Yeah. So we're going to see who the developers are who really take hold of this project. It's not going to be easy, but start putting on uh, doing these conversions yep. and opening up a whole new building segment of affordable housing. Yeah, especially in, in Midtown. It happened downtown after 9-11 where they converted all those commercial to really luxury residential that you haven't seen. It was a vacant area. There's 33,000 living there and then by 2009 there was a hundred thousand so it just shows the boom in residential um i can't see this city coming back to i was on the subway today and it was empty so uh i fridays most people have off i don't think the the typical <laughs> friday everyone's in the office i'm hearing three days a week i just can't see the company saying it's smart to have as much commercial space and to be honest we're here in midtown you look at all the floor plans across, it's vacant. The whole floor plan of the entire floor of say the 20th floor to the 25th floor is, no one's there. That's a lot of money the landlord is 
is not making. So yeah, it'll well, be interesting. Also, there's a lot of small businesses. You're, you're, you need to move over. A little okay. Little bit, my, my deepest apologies. You know, I know you're going to be sad about that later when you watch it. So. Well, we have the same jacket, so we're, we're blending <laughs> in. <laughs> the, uh, now I'm losing my train of thought. Good. Here. But uh, I will say on the construction, because yeah. I said this yesterday, is that it's very expensive because it's the positive is the building is built. The negative is that the commercial building, a commercial building is a huge footprint. So you have to have long hallways to get to the windows in a residential building. And this is what it is downtown. You have gigantic, like 50 foot hallways to get to where there's windows. And the second thing is the concrete between the floors is a lot thicker. So running piping, electrical, HVAC, it's just not going to be easy. Yeah. Well, there's definitely going to be a lot of them because I was thinking, you know, with all the layoffs, with a pending recession, you know, cost cutting is very important for these yep. companies, especially like the smaller mid-sized companies where they're going to be the ones in those offices. Yeah. So soon they're going to have to, you know, these landlords are going to want to convert it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the government and the new developers can work together and, you know, that would be a big boom, solution. big boom. Yeah. So mine was about uh, AI. Everyone's heard about it. Chat GPT, GPT. Microsoft's putting in 10 billion. Amazon's getting involved. Obviously, Google's getting involved. Um, IBM has Watson for a while. Um, Watson is actually it's very interesting. I was I was listening to it about they're using it for the medical Medicare medical field, and they essentially scour the papers every single day the medical papers to see what's the latest thing and no person can actually do that so how does it deal with real estate there was someone that was on msnbc on film saying listen i took five minutes to do my listing presentation they're bragging about it and to be honest if i was the owner i'm like i'm giving you six percent what'd you do with the extra 55 minutes that it normally takes you to write a listing description so they were bragging about it what I was also wondering about is how many blogs, real estate blogs, how many news articles about real estate are going to be written by yeah, AI? Those newsletters. And yeah, newsletters, market reports, market updates, Even you know. Captions, social. Captions, social, yeah. yeah. Everything is going to be completely flipped upside down if you just continuously go to a website. It's just you choose the industry, you choose what you're going to write, and then you put the topic and boom. You just say real estate, YouTube caption, and then what it's about, and they'll come up with it. The interesting thing is Google was totally against this. And the head search at Google said that they were actually now for this as long as it's quality search results. So it'll be interesting how it impacts real estate. Yeah, you know? it's very interesting how uh, you know people are criticizing it or at least – diving deeper into it now yeah. that it's like the hottest topic everybody's like playing around with chat G chat gpt and like figuring out what type of responses that it gives yeah and some of those are controversial some of those may be incorrect some of those you know uh, we used it yesterday and i said what's a good email what's a good phone call script yeah. you know and it came out with great points it, it came out with like introduction provide uh, a fact and then provide rapport and then go for the close. And I'm like, that's exactly what a sales call would be about. And it's, you know, emails, text messages, writing a letter. So it'll be interesting how it affects not only real estate, but the rest of the industries. Yeah. And mine, a little more clickbaity. Uh, you might have seen this on Instagram, Facebook. You know, this uh, article has been going around about the luxury real estate agent influencer who was busted for stealing $381,000 in COVID relief funds. Why? To fund her lavish lifestyle. Wow. Entrepreneur.com. <laughs> that is lavish. That is <laughs> lavish first lifestyle. Class. Uh, Just imagine that. That's not over a lifetime. Like, if she got caught, no, when that's you actually like read two what years. She did, it's, you know, here's a great first line of it. The U.S. Department of Justice has indicated Miami-based luxury real estate influencer for committing a COVID-19 scam to pay for her jet set lifestyle. There you go. Yeah. To so then she, become an influencer. I think she got a, uh, <laughs> oh a, a, an apartment and then a uh, luxury car that was like $250,000. Yeah. That is, that is that is one thing you do not but want. But she's not the only one. Eric is not, actually going to take her side. No, he no, took no, her no, side no. I did yesterday. You know, yeah, maybe I'll just let that go. Uh, 
there is a lot of people out there who took the funds. They're not just in real estate, and obviously there was going to be a lot of fraud. So yeah. on her, you know, if your business is luxury real estate and you're an influencer and you need, you feel like you need to have these things, I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe she bought that car from a car dealer who then sent her five, six clients and she closed in Miami on them. Yeah. So I feel like there is going to be a fine line, but obviously, you know, personally, if you are crossing the line on the COVID. If you're going part, jet setting, that's a little it, bit different. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would be really interesting if I were her, which I'm not. Yes. I would uh, make a YouTube video and speak out on my side because clearly she's being you know, and, yeah. painted in a certain way. You got to control that narrative. And that's an entrepreneurial magazine, which is going to come up in Google results when you put in her name. Yeah. And only uh, 33,000 followers. Yeah, that's not enough. That's, that's not, not much, enough. Uh, you know, to be called an influencer. And I said it yesterday, it was called a, and obviously, you know, you can maybe push back on how much the percentage is, percentage is that you have to pay back, but it was a PPP loan. <laughs> it was a PPP check free. Uh, and the reason being, I brought it up yesterday, is that Eight thousand dollars was offered in two thousand nine to first time home buyers. This was when it was the credit freeze, no one was buying, blah blah blah. And all of the people that I represented essentially bought got the eight thousand dollars and one attorney didn't let the buyer know and she owed it two years later and got mad. The attorney ended up writing the check. But it's one of those things that I wonder how many people are now in this pickle where they said, Wait, this isn't free money. I have to pay this three hundred and eighty one thousand dollars well, back. It would be a lot different if she had, you know, five employees working for yeah. her and they were on exactly you know, X amount of a salary. The salary they were fine with. Yeah. So. The miscellaneous personal, they were not. Yeah. So good luck on that. <laughs> So we'll keep you posted. Exactly. So we'll be back on Tuesday. We're going to be going, actually, Thursday. no, Thursday. We're going to be going live every Thursday, new news, um, kind of bringing in a whole scope of things and making it a little bit more interesting than the clickbait, AI, chat, BT, chat whatever, you gotta get headlines. There. I know I got to get it. I'm just going to say chat, open AI, whatever you want to say. See you guys later. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on.